to make sense of the world, you should definitely consider reading Factfulness by Hans Anna and Ola Rosling. It's subtitled 10 Reasons You're Wrong About the World and Why Things Are Better Than You Think. It comes highly recommended by e.g. Bill Gates, cognitive psychologist Steven Pinker, and many others. Now what is factfulness? It's kind of an odd word. Well, Rosling describes factfulness as the stress-reducing habit of only carrying opinions for which you have strongly supported facts. It's a set of tools that will help you process information. Rosling lists 10 different instincts that create misconceptions about the world and offers some fantastic advice on how to control those instincts. First up is the gap instinct. Trying to fit the whole world into two categories, like the rich and the poor, the developed and developing countries, leads to oversimplification and doesn't help us make sense of the world. Instead of talking about the rich and the poor, Rosling suggests dividing the world into four income levels, like this. Then we'll see that the income of the majority actually fall in either level 2 or 3. In other words, we should be wary of arguments that compare only two extremes. To control the gap instinct, we should look for the majority. Then we'll realize that where we expect to find a gap, we'll frequently find the majority. The second instinct is the negativity instinct. We have a tendency to notice the bad more than the good, perhaps for evolutionary reasons. To control this instinct, we should expect bad news. Good news or gradual improvements are rarely reported, so we may miss them altogether if we don't follow the data. Rosling provides a list of 16 bad things that have decreased unnoticeably, like legal slavery, oil spills, child mortality, battle deaths, etc. And 16 good things that increased, like more science, more music, increased literacy, etc. The third instinct is the straight line instinct. When we see a graph with a straight line, we tend to think that the line will continue straight. However, most trends do not follow straight lines. If you notice a child growing 10 centimeters three years in a row, don't worry. It will not continue until they are as tall as the Seattle Space Needle. You can say the same of ET population growth. The exponential growth will not and cannot continue. To control this instinct, we should remember that curves come in different shapes. The fourth instinct is the fear instinct. Both you and I and the media tend to filter the world to find the most scary stories. We are built by evolution to detect frightening things. But that does not mean that they are the most risky. Sharks are perhaps more frightening than stairs, but the latter are far more risky to most people. Decisions based on fear are likely to be bad. To control this instinct, we should try to calculate risks. The fifth instinct is the size instinct. We should recognize when we're presented with a single lonely number that seems impressively small or large. Single numbers on their own are misleading, like following the death toll of a pandemic without knowing how many people normally die. We need something to compare with. To control the size instinct, we should get things in proportions and look for comparisons. The sixth instinct is the generalization instinct. We sometimes tend to draw conclusions based on a single example. Maybe we witnessed someone from the neighboring village being violent, so we conclude that everyone from that village must be violent. To understand the world better, we should look for more examples. Categories can be pretty misleading, so to control this instinct, we should question our categories. There may be differences within groups or similarities across groups. If we generalize based on the majority, we need to ask ourselves if the majority is 51% or 99% or something in between. The seventh instinct is the destiny instinct. This is the idea that innate characteristics determine the destinies of people, countries, religions or cultures, and they cannot change. Just because religions and cultures change slowly, that does not mean they are destined to remain the same. To control this instinct, stay open to new data and remember that slow change is still change. The eighth instinct is the single perspective instinct. Instead of evaluating the world based on a single idea, like free markets or socialism, psychology or sociology, physics or chemistry, 
we should recognize that many perspectives are more likely to lead to practical solutions. So in a world divided by ideology, we need more than one analytical tool. To control this instinct, we should get a toolbox, not a single tool like a hammer. The ninth instinct is the blame instinct. This is the instinct to find a clear and simple reason for why something happened. We're tempted to find someone to blame. We should recognize when a scapegoat is being used and resist using scapegoats ourselves. We should look for causes instead of villains and systems instead of heroes. The tenth instinct is the urgency instinct. In the face of danger, we feel we should take immediate action, but most decisions in modern life are no longer made when we're in immediate danger. This stops us from thinking carefully about the issue. We should recognize when a decision feels urgent and remember that it rarely is. To control this instinct, take small steps and insist on getting the data. Those were my non-fiction takeaways from Factfulness. I especially like Rosling's quote, things can be both bad and better. In conclusion, Factfulness is a great book that provides reasons for optimism and great tools for making sense of the world. It's well written and full of quirky little anecdotes that makes it a joy to read. I highly recommend it. More non-fiction takeaways to come on this channel. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell below.